Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on wireless security considerations. Today we're going to be discussing some of the unique challenges of wireless networks, and then we're going to move on to security for wireless. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. So let's talk about the unique challenge of wireless. Wireless networks can represent a special challenge in the network hardening process. One of the main tenets of network security is hiding your traffic. With wireless, it's impossible to hide your traffic because it flows over the airwaves. So with the proper equipment, anybody can see that traffic flowing on a wireless network. Also, end users will often install their own access points for convenience, allowing them to connect to the network wirelessly on their own. These rogue access points can create a vulnerability in the network as a whole. One method of combating these rogue access points is by conducting periodic site surveys. Using a combination of hardware and software, site surveys can help to locate rogue access points so they can be removed. Site surveys can also be used to ensure that wireless network signals are only present where they should be. The only wireless signals that should be present in any environment are those that are specifically authorized to be there. Now let's move on to security for wireless. First up is default username and passwords. All networking devices come with a default administrator username and password. A best practice is to change or disable the default administrator username and password when setting up the device. These defaults are well known and do represent a security vulnerability. Then there are the service set identifier broadcasts or the SSID broadcasts. A wireless access point will broadcast the names of available networks. By default, the SSID is broadcast in clear text, creating a vulnerability. A best practice is to set the WAP to hide the SSID beaconing. This will prevent the casual user from seeing the wireless network, but even with the beacon set to be hidden with the proper hardware and software, an attacker can still read those broadcasts. So that in itself will not stop a determined hacker. Then there's device placement. Wireless access points with omnidirectional antennas should be placed in the center of the desired coverage area. Omnidirectional antennas broadcast in all directions uniformly. So if you place it on the edge of where you want network coverage to occur, you're going to be placing your wireless signal where it shouldn't belong. Wireless access points with directional antennas can be placed toward the edge of the desired coverage area. Directional antennas broadcast in a specific direction only. Then there are power level controls. Most wireless access points come with the ability to adjust the power levels of the radio frequency signal. RF power levels should be set to reduce or increase the wireless coverage area to what is desired. All WAPs come with the ability to limit which layer two MAC addresses can connect to the wireless network. While this can increase the security of the wireless network, MAC addresses can be spoofed by an attacker. In addition to this, MAC filtering may not be appropriate in all situations, especially if there are, are a lot of wireless devices that come and go from the network with new ones showing up all the time. In this case, MAC filtering is not the best option. A better option would be to enable encryption. So let's talk about encryption and we're going to begin with WEP, which stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy. It's an older encryption standard that utilizes a pre-shared key to encrypt messages between the wireless access point and the connecting devices. WEP used the RC4 algorithm for the encryption. It is easily broken and should not be used. 
it can take an attacker just minutes to crack a WEP encrypted network. Better than WEP is WPA, that's Wireless Protected Access. It is also an older encryption standard and it was used as an intermediate replacement for wired equivalent privacy encryption until a better standard could be brought online. WPA introduced TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, as an additional security measure. TKIP creates a new security key for every packet that is sent across the wireless network. WPA can be broken and should not be used unless absolutely necessary. Better than WPA is WPA2 Personal. This is the current wireless encryption standard for the home or small business and it utilizes a pre-shared key for encryption. WPA2 Personal introduced counter mode cipher block chaining message authentication code protocol with advanced encryption standard, so that would be CCMP with AES as a means of addressing the weaknesses present in WEP and WPA. It cannot be easily cracked, but given enough time and computing resources, it can also be broken. But you can still consider it a secure encryption standard for the home or small office. Better yet, if you have the resources, you might want to implement WPA Enterprise. It is the current wireless encryption standard for larger businesses. Users are required to be authenticated before being allowed to connect to the wireless network. The authentication can occur using different methods that all fall within the 802.1x standard. The wireless access point will pass requests to log on to an authentication server, commonly a RADIUS server, to authenticate the user before allowing access to the wireless network. Now let's talk about Extensible Authentication Protocol, or EEP. It's a common authentication protocol used by WPA2 to allow access to wireless networks. EAP packets are encapsulated within 802.1x packets, which are forwarded to an authentication server. There are different versions of EAP. There is LEAP, or Lightweight EAP, which is a Cisco proprietary method of implementing EAP. It was developed before 802.1x was standardized. Then there's PEEP, Protected EAP. It is a method of encapsulating EAP packets with transport layer security encryption in order to increase the security of the wireless transmission. There are some additional wireless network security measures that you can take. First up is the captive portal. Captive portals can be used to require users to authenticate through a web page when attempting to join a network. They're a common method used in publicly available wireless networks. You know when you agree to the terms of service when you sign on to a public wireless network? That is a captive portal. Then there's VPN over wireless, which can be used to further increase wireless security. Wireless network access must be through a VPN. This adds an additional level of security in the network as the VPN will implement IPsec as a means of end-to-end -end security. Now that concludes this session on wireless security considerations. We discussed the unique challenge of wireless and then we concluded with security for wireless. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.